Well, um, this lecture covers um, one basic concept in survival analysis, censoring, okay? To talk about censoring, uh, it might help to also uh, mention truncation. Okay? What makes survival analysis uh, more complicated than other generalized uh, linear models or other uh, regression type of models is censoring and truncation, okay? So what is censoring? Censoring occurs when we do not know the exact time of event, but we do know the event occurred before or after a known time or within a given interval. That is, we have these subjects or cases um, in our study, but somehow we're not able to observe uh, the event of interest or the milestone event occurring during the time interval of our observational study. So the milestone event either occurred before our observation or after, but we do have these cases um, under study. And, uh, you know, uh, we include these cases in our analysis. Uh, so in essence, censoring is a special type of missing data issue. Okay? Truncation occurs when we do not know, when we do not observe individuals with event times that are smaller or larger than certain values. So we don't include these cases in our study. Okay, so this is a more serious issue. And in essence, uh, you know, uh, the problem uh, associated with truncation is sample selection because we don't have cases that are supposed to be in our study. As opposed to censoring, we do have these cases, okay, in our study. But the issue is that there's, you know, kind of uh, missing data, missing information about these cases. And uh, in this class, I'm just going to focus on censoring um, and a special type of censoring, uh, right censoring, because that is the simplest form of censoring. So what, what is censoring? Censoring, when censoring occurs, that means the event or milestone uh, event occur either before or after interval or study time. We include such cases in our study. So we don't drop these cases. Well, this is not a sample selection issue. Rather, this is an uh, issue about, you know, some, uh, about missing some information. We know it already occurred or will occur. When we say will occur, that means right sensor. But we don't know uh, its exact value or exact time when it occurs or it occurred. And a data point is above or below a threshold, basically, you know, um, but it is unknown by how much here we're talking about time to event. So roughly we know it is uh, either before our study time or after, okay? But it's unknown by how much. Um, so here, I'm gonna quickly go over uh, the predominant form of censoring, right censoring. Um, so here is definition about right sensory. A lifetime X, so basically it, it is a measure of time to event associated with individual. In a study, it does not have to be an individual, but a case or a subject, sometimes could be machinery, right? Is considered to be a right sensory if it is greater, okay, that X, lifetime X, time to event is greater than a censoring time CR. The data observed on the individual can be recorded as T, comma, delta, where T is the minimum of either the time to event or the censoring time, okay? So when the censoring time is smaller than time to event, what we'll have is the censoring time, because we don't know exactly, you know, 
for the time to event, right? Because that's after the sense frame time, and we don't know exactly. Okay, when a live time is smaller than sense frame time, what we observe is what is the time to event or live time x, right? And the delta is equal to one if t here, the time variable, okay, is equal to the time to event or lifetime x. And if it is zero, then t is equal to uh, the censoring time. So delta here, you know, uh, a lot of time is called the censoring status variable, right? And in this case, you know, when it is one, then we do observe uh, the uh, time to event. Okay. And when delta is zero, then it is sensor. It is sensor. So here is a graph of what is called technical term ordinary type one censoring. That is, the censoring time is pre specified and the, time, and the same for all individuals. This kind of censoring is usually used in animal studies and clinical trials. So here we have start of study the same time, and then we have end of study the same time. We have four observations, right? And we begin uh, to observe uh, this case is the same time, that is start of study. And here X1, X2, and X4, their time to event occurred during our uh, you know, uh, observation of time interval, uh, except what? The third case, right? It's censored, okay? And the milestone event in this case, you know, if we're talking about terminal event occurs after the end of study, 